and yep we are live we are live um hello people hello all the beautiful people out here so the winters are on its peak back here in delhi india and we have we have such a beautiful face today with us uh, rodrigo from from <clears throat> brazil have joined in and i have linked his uh, you know youtube channel first not talking about youtube he is a social critic he is an anthropologist uh, studied from san francisco university um th that's a university right if i'm not wrong yeah it, uh, it was in uh, san francisco the city but uh where i studied anthrop post-colonial anthropology was in the california institute of california. integral studies okay of okay integral studies. so that's yeah. a part of cal caltech or campus no it's not it's a separate uh non-profit institute okay it, okay it was it was founded by an indian uh uh thinker called sri orobiondo Mm. So it was founded by him, I think, in the 60s or 70, early 70s. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, but the, the, the programs there are all about humanities. Mm -hmm. it, they developed into various, various factions, mm -hmm. um, which are some of them more spiritualistic, but anthropology program tended to be, when I was mm -hmm. there, more of an activist and critical thinking type mm -hmm. of, of program okay so so uh, rodrigo back here no this is a man who knows his stuff and you can go through his youtube channel you know there is um, an english playlist if you want to go through that and uh, mm -hmm. anyone from the community can uh, call real people in uh, so that they could join in and yeah so today we are gonna cover everything about nietzsche frederick nietzsche because frederick nietzsche is someone who is misinterpreted by many you know and many just just worship him due to him being mentioned in self-help youtube videos and self-help youtube channels his concept of superman not knowing what the actual superman is what he wanted to convey many people you know just having his book uh, one of his best work the masterpiece the masterpiece uh, the spokes are thusra in their bookshelves you know trying to uh, show themselves off that they are mere philosophers you know uh, but not understanding the gist of the book so today we have the man the man and we are gonna discuss everything about Nietzsche so if someone who is not able to join the stream they can just watch the video once it gets uploaded you should also share and subscribe uh, Rodrigo's channel okay so uh, first question for you Rodrigo is is uh -huh. the the first thing is how can you explain Nietzsche as a human being or as a man, as a person, as a philosopher, mm. you know, to a common man, to a layman? How can you explain who is Nietzsche? Right. Well, first, uh, there's no way we can talk about everything Nietzsche talked about here. Yeah, for sure. You know that, but, <laughs> uh, I understand you were saying, let's be open and talk about whatever comes up. <laughs> but that's a really good question. Who was Nietzsche? Um, Nietzsche was somebody that, of course, lived life to an intensity mm. uh, that was uh, very strong, very yeah. strong intensity with life. Mm. He, he really, uh, which means not that he just wanted to take life seriously, but that he wanted to play very seriously too hmm. to have joyful life seriously too which means like to give in to life as much as he could this of course went forward with his life and you can see him continuously coming back to that hmm. even writing a book uh, which is for me his greatest uh, philosophy book with uh, with uh, directly a philosophical uh, tone, uh, not like Zarathustra, which is has uh, a lot of his philosophy there, but it's a fiction, right? So uh, in the gay science, mm. the gay science for me, which, which is his major, major philo directly philosophical work, he calls it the gay science, which means the happy, mm. joyful science, okay. right? Which is the joyful knowledge. Mm. So 
Why joyful? Because mm. knowledge that could be coming mm. from a life that mm. is willing to live life itself with joy, mm. that is uh, attuned to get away with anything that pulls one down in a way of, you know, flow of, of joy, of energy for life, will to live, all those things, mm. just get away with that, and as much as he could. And he points to historical and cultural and knowledge and linguistic legacies that were, in his view, from inside the Western and Christian cultures, mm. pulling one down, mm. crippling people, mm. uh, disengaging them mm. from their own bodies sometimes. Mm. So uh, all his critique of how from Plato's metaphysics to Christianity, this whole will for the truth as the will for another world, mm. as disengagement from the body, from mm. life, as the best solution, uh, was for him not a, a best solution. Of course, it was, it was to be critiqued. It was to be mm. seen. Why, was, why were people talking about this? Mm. Why did they, most of all, create this because he could not believe mm. that this was life mm. from his own life he mm. could although he had during most of his life he had physical problems mm. corporeal injuries sickness that sometimes kept him sleeping with he heavy headaches for mm -hmm. days without mm. being able to get up Mm. Even though he had all those corporeal uh, realities that he could lend him to give in to these thinkings that, well, you know, I'm suffering, but when I die, it will be all right. He never gave in to that. Mm. He went to the opposite way. Mm. He's like, well, this is life. Mm. Let me charge in. <laughs> Let me give me more. Mm, live dangerously handle. live dangerously i can handle and mm. you know because life was of course not only that the, he had his moments of course also when he got out of sickness and could mm. feel the other side of life or other many sides of life mm. uh you know we we nietzsche was not a person to fall into dualistic perspectives on life good or bad, true or false, yes. he questioned those, you know, sickness and health, you know, things are always very mm. mixed uh, mm. for our experience if we pay attention, mm. for really paying attention. Mm. Because in his, in his moments of great uh, bodily sickness, he had some of his best insights into life and into willing uh, for himself other ways of experiencing himself and life. Mm. So things are not, you know, black and white only. Mm. They, they mix one thing like leads to another. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And it's not that you can only have a great thought from misery or suffering. It's not that either. It would be too easy mm. if life was only about oh, you want to write a great book, then just suffer. <laughs> well, we would see, you know, uh, artists will be torturing themselves <laughs> every day. And some do, but I think it, yeah. it could work for some people for <clears throat> some time, but I don't think it works for all, <clears throat> all the time. Mm. I think it's, it, it could be very counterproductive mm. even. And uh, I think Nietzsche would agree because he said, uh, many times these critiques of, of negative and nihilist uh, philosophers or, or pessimist philosophers like Schopenhauer is that, well, this guy, yeah, he's saying that life is all suffering and boredom, but how is he living then? Mm. You know, like, mm. is, how is he living life mm. to be able to call it that? Mm -hmm. So 
philosophy for Nietzsche is directly related to how one lives a life, to the mode of living mm. of a thinker. Mm. So it doesn't mean that we can draw a transparent parallel between mm. reading one's book and knowing how that person experiences mm. the world. It's not that. Language and reality are not transparent to each other for Nietzsche, mm. but when you read, something is happening there. When, you, when a philosopher is saying things, something is happening there. Mm. And when you're looking into the whole context context mm. cultural historical context mm. when you're looking also why not at the philosopher's life and everything mm. you 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 can make uh a lot of uh inflections and reflections about well why is this person for example descartes mm. or kant why are these metaphysicians that are also christian mm. in an european culture saying these things about a supposedly uh interior self that has the truth that knows mm. and that has a high universal mm. rationality and why why in this case you know mm. and if you look then at uh the history of 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 the production of culture, of subjectivity, you can get lots of ideas of why these people were reproducing ways of being and ways of thinking of their own cultures and not reflecting mm. about it. And Nietzsche goes right into that, those big, big, big legacies, mm. uh, to name at least two, mm. which is Platonism, Mm. as a way of doing metaphysics it's not the only way mm. but a, a certain form of metaphysics that in later christianity took on as and transformed it into a religion into a way uh, nietzsche says of the platonism of the masses mm. into a way of uh, a further negation mm. of one's body of of uh, reality as as we know it in the name of a supposedly higher reality that's outside of us mm. and for him that there's no bigger nihilism than that and of course uh, at first in christianity what founded all these values of another world as, as higher values was god the idea mm. of god sustained this idea that this life is of lesser value than the afterlife, right? Or mm. the pre-life, mm. like uh, Plato or some kinds of Christianity. And then you have the fall, and we are inside a, a lesser life going to a higher life again. So mm. Nietzsche was like, okay, this happened. And then they put God at the center of all values. But this same, same, same culture, when it progresses... When it gets to the 18th uh, century or even earlier, mm. it's continually critiquing its own values. And then God itself is critiqued. God itself uh, it's, is not the center of the world anymore for dominant uh, um, Western societies. Mm. Now there's something else. It's called man. And mm. it's called morality. Mm. Morality for Nietzsche is that which uh, because before, the good and the bad, or good and evil, uh, right and wrong, true and false, were all to be given by God. Mm. Or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the Middle Ages, mm. for a thousand years of Christianity. Mm. And then, slowly and slowly and slowly, some philosophers, thinkers, start to question that and start to carve out another space called, which would be called man. Mm. But this man took the place of the so-called God, mm. of what they called God. They, uh, this man progressively came to be that which is now studying what is the true, what is the false for himself, mm. what is the right, what is the wrong for himself. Mm. So he displaces, he kills God <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, mm. with his own morality, but morality which then was 
the result of God's wish or the of the existence itself mm. of God mm. now is something that can be understood rationally, mm. even through science. And nowadays you have, um, for example, experts uh, in cognitive sciences or in psychology, mm. humanities like Sam Harris, mm. Steven Pinker, all these guys saying, we will know the truth of morality for man, for, for the world. Mm. They're saying this, like the, in the book, The Moral Landscape mm. by Sam Harris. Mm. So this idea that now man can govern himself, can know what is good for him, mm. can know what is bad for him, mm. universally dictated by science. Mm. Wow, wonderful, right? Mm. But it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's mm, a nightmare. For sure, for sure. Because it's still that wish to know everything. Mm. And in, in a way, it's another uh, point in the history of nihilism. Mm. Because the history of nihilism is the continual history of this bunking, taking away from the altar the higher truth and replacing it with a new higher truth. Okay. And then you disbunk again. You had God, you have man, and now you had have you don't have man, you have science, rationality, and mm. then you'll have another, 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 another constant upgradation. Constant upgradation. A constant look to mm. for the highest new truth, for mm. the old for the best new truth that man can find. But we are for me, we are still inside. Mm. The foundation called man mm. that replaced the foundation for mm. Western societies uh, called God. Mm. And when I say Western societies, it's because you have all kinds of societies and cultures in the world. We cannot speak for everyone, mm. but we can point specifically the dominances in Western societies, mm. which doesn't mean that even when we say Western societies, every, everyone thinks the same. Otherwise, mm. there would be no Nietzschean critique, critique or Foucauldian critique from within it. Mm. Uh, so there are always differences. There are people looking at these legacies and saying, this is not the only way. This dominant ways, the, these dominant ways people are thinking, living, mm -hmm. and experiencing themselves are mm. just dominant ways. They're not the only ways, even within the West. So we're mm. not making a critique of the West as a as a as a thing that doesn't exist. You mm. know that doesn't exist. It's not a man. <laughs> mm. Mm. You know. Yeah, I get because you. Because this tendency is is the problem. The, the tendency to think that things are objects to know and that we can know them mm. as as humans. We can have access to a, a full knowledge. This is what exactly we are critiquing. So our critique cannot come back to add us and say, oh, but you're doing the same thing. No, mm. we're not. We're, we're talking about specific dominant patterns and legacies mm -hmm. that we're pointing to as problematic. And why are they problematic? Because they are promising falsehoods. Because also, more importantly, because falsehoods were always promising, we're mm. always doing. The, more importantly, these are violent ways of dealing with reality because mm. they they legitimate certain mm. forms of violence of silencing others mm. silencing difference silencing about ways of thinking that could have more space and they don't because there's man taking over the whole space of discourse and mm. and, and institutions practices you know mm. yeah yeah i get you i get you a question i wanted to just i just wanted to add one question right here uh, which was i was having a live stream uh, recently I was having a live stream and someone came up to me uh, in the chat and wrote wrote to me that uh, what what is the difference between not a difference he was saying that eastern philosophy is just high above western philosophy or what do you mm. think western is greater or eastern is greater okay. so you know that was a yeah. question which I said that this is a very subjective question we cannot answer mm -hmm. it in a very binary yeah. form so I said yeah. I just, yeah. you know, I just summarize. I, I want you to elaborate mm -hmm. on this. So I, what I summarize yeah. is I said, Eastern philosophy is trying to run away from suffering. Western philosophy mm -hmm. is trying to embrace suffering. 
in a nutshell mm. so this is what mm-hmm. i gave which was a very uh, mediocre answer but i want you to elaborate <laughs> uh, on this one yeah. and and on the fact that we were talking about duality you uh, the nietzsche's mm-hmm. nietzsche did not believe in duality which is uh, pretty yeah. good why because a person yeah. is very unfortunate if mm. he does not see the dark side of life which we tag mm-hmm. as dark yeah. which we tag as dark yeah. right like a person mm-hmm. who's always thinking himself to be very happy very ecstatic mm-hmm. in a very very blissful uh, environment yeah. you know he's j- he's just not witnessed the entirety of la- of life in general mm-hmm. if you have not seen the yeah. both both facets of the coin you know both faces yeah. of the coin so what's your yeah. take on that well first uh, for somebody to say eastern western and to suppose they know everything about the east and everything mm. about the west mm. i have to meet that person please <laughs> show up because i don't know anyone that knows how all people in the, the east think mm. that have talked to everybody in mm. the east all the billions of people and of course the same for the west mm. and when they say east and west they're also th- uh making up a story that humanity is divided in only two sides of mm. ways of thinking mm. which is very reductionistic mm. uh when i mm. just walk around brazil mm. we have more than 300 indigenous native cultures in brazil mm. and each culture has more or less a different philosophy a mm. different outlook outlook on life yeah which looks the same only from a western perspective or mm. another very different perspective mm. but when you really get to know how these different peoples living different forests around here mm. uh indige- called so called indigenous people and some of them are saying what's that what's mm. indigenous mm. you're you're labeling us as if we are the same we're so different mm. we don't think the world the same our cosmology is so radically different mm. uh views of the world relations even to nature mm. the natures they live in they're mm. not all in the amazon mm. and even <laughs> what people think of the amazon is totally wrong because the mm. amazon when you walk like 100 kilometers you're in totally different forest already yeah. it's not the same plants the same animals mm. Uh, so nature changes drastically and mm. people have to change their ways and mm. beliefs too. Mm. And so somebody to say that, oh, the, all the West is this, all the East is that, this very pro- that is very problematic. Mm. Although, uh, although you might find specific philosophies, mm-hmm. specific thinkers in the East and compare them mm-hmm. to specific philosophies and and thinkers in the West, and Nietzsche did that mm. uh, very badly because Nietzsche had only read a few things from mm. Buddhism, some some Buddhism schools, mm. uh, very roughly and very bad translations. So he had this very schematic idea, mm. but it was very influential for him. Very because in, 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 that's why he cites Buddhism a lot. And he even, uh, although he critiques Buddhism, for example, and and puts it all in a one only basket, uh, as if Buddhism was one thing. But that's that's also Nietzsche. Like he 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 just wants to make a point, and he's like, "Oh, Buddhism is this," and hmm. um, like he does in the Antichrist and some other points. But he 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 compares Buddhism to Christianity, and he said, <laughs> "Buddhism it's is it's better." <laughs> it's, is less is less nihilist mm. uh is less concerned um mm. with uh with a negation uh as as uh, so he's he's saying like buddhism would be more evolved an evolved christianity like a, a nobler christianity uh because it's not uh it's looking at uh, for him it's looking Oh, well, this is a whole new uh, element to go into, but it's looking at life uh, not as uh, it doesn't just want uh, any foundation. So it it, it doesn't want mm. 
it doesn't want, it doesn't wish for vengeance against life. And so in that sense, Christianity for him was worse because vengeance mm. is something coming from a slave morality, from somebody that really feels pain with against life and wants vengeance against against another. Mm. So Christianity was very constructed about this idea of fighting evil, right? So this duality. Mm. And Buddhism was like toy illusions. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, don't uh, just take it away from your mind. And mm. the, the evil and good or the two sides are illusions of mm. your consciousness. So, mm. so that for him was like, that's interesting. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, but again, Nietzsche didn't know much about Buddhism, all the schools and all the differences. And, and mm. but he was using, I think, Buddhism because his target was... Uh, much closer to himself, to his own life, as somebody that, uh, when he was young, was studying to be a future priest, a mm. future uh, a Protestant, Protestant uh, you know, mm. leader, and and then gave up mm. uh, later in life when he discovered the studies, the ancients, philosophy, Plato. Mm. All this was an opening up of another universe. He's like, oh, this is where everything comes from. Yeah, this is where these Christians, I, Christian ideas, are coming from. Mm. Through all these philosophers, from the from Plato to the Stoics to the early Christian fathers, they're all just copying each other. Mm. That's it. They're mm. creating on each other's ideas. Yeah, yeah, improving. They're not just receiving everything as as it said from you know revelation from god whatever mm. no they're, they're they're also copying they're copying each other mm. and then he was like okay let's see what came before plato and he's like oh there's something different here the pre-socratics were radically different what mm. happened and then mm. he went uh to you know he he read in greek mm. he read in latin so he went to the sources mm. he and he he went to the to the you know the words mm. they were using which is very important to understand plato better mm. to understand the stoics the roman stoics in mm. latin mm. and in greek so he went to the pre pre-socratics and he's like mm. there's something radically different here mm. what happened and then then his first major work was trying to grapple with that what happened between pre-Socrates and after Plato, you know, after mm. Socrates and Plato. Mm. And then he's like, oh, there's a major change happening. Mm. And this major change was taken up, taken up, taken up. And we got into this mess called Christianity, mm -hmm. which now produces people to think and live in a certain way, in a certain way that hasn't been so interesting because people are talking about this life in a way that's not interesting mm. you know yeah. when you know the pre-socratics were like all there is is water all there is is fire so mm. real things yeah yeah <laughs> matter I get you. things material things but like, really all there is is this the cosmos yeah deal with it you yeah. know, deal with the cosmos yeah uh, even the stoics after plato mm. uh but even plato like plato had this idea of the world of the ideas but uh, but he was not still in a total negation of this world it's with christianity that a negation really really a strong negation of the body mm. and of 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 life comes and mm. which makes up you know modern man to be a very sad thing in the west you know mm. a, a lost thing which is like oh now i i i'm an i'm an individual having to grapple with my own self as my own my own my starting point and the end point how sad is that mm. you know there's no relation to to higher values anymore there's no relation to nature even as central anymore people are are still today in the west trying to recover some sense of uh being in a large in larger uni in a larger universe 
uh, that you know is we are part of we are in a sense uh but uh we're we're so so uh you know thrown at us every day are bits and pieces of this individualization mm. of this disconnection from the body of you know and again there there's there's no moral about this story you know it's not for us to understand the history of western subjects or or culture in a moral way oh oh we fell it's again like it's not that we had a fall and we must recover paradise paradise never existed <laughs> but and yeah. there's no one fall yeah. we're full of issues but we're full of possibilities the thing is can we imagine and and see possibilities without having this cultural uh uh reflection about about how we got here i th i don't think we can mm. i don't think we can really uh come to a deep uh rethinking about ourselves in the west mm. without rethinking the legacy of christian subjectivities christian forms of ways of thinking about ourselves our bodies our legacies of thought that came with it and met uh, this kind of metaphysics not all metaphysics but this kind of metaphysics in all its problems i think uh, i am much more every day much more convinced that uh, we can only produce meaningful social change if we really tackle and confront these legacies mm. and that's why i love nietzsche i think he he just he says you know this is what we have to deal with mm. this is what's happening the death of god what happens after the death of god mm. we're in another uh point but we're still reproducing the problems we we mm. had with god as the center because we still think we have uh a truth uh to to live by you know truths that govern us and that this uh, this alignment with a universal truth is still some even if it's now individual now it's all relative it's all my truth my, my truth. truth yeah it's it's still it's still within this domain that's so problematic that's so like oh it's only my truth you, you cannot you cannot uh talk about my truth i I, the I, né? the I, right? Mm -hmm. The, the me. I comes again. Me, I, the, the I ego. as a yeah. truth. The I as a truth. Mm. So it goes many places, right? Mm. Uh, it goes, it doesn't, um, metaphysical truths that came to force with Christianity. Mm. They don't just uh, produce subjects that talk about universal truths out there. They can talk about universal truths within the subject, within the subject yeah. which is very characteristic mm. of Christian subjects. It's like, oh, I have my truth. Do you want to know my truth? My mm. truth is what matters. Yeah. You know, so we have these, you know, in, in the age of social media, it's it's all like people want to show what they truly are, the truths that govern them. Mm. And that's their way of 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 showing themselves how good they are mm. how, how how productive they are how capable they are of, of telling them the truth of themselves mm -hmm. and from Nietzsche Michel Foucault is the one that shows how this happened in western history of the subject understanding that his task in life mm. is to govern himself by his interior truth and sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. What matters is for the subject is that he has an interiority mm. of truth. Mm. That's his relation to truth now. It's interior. Yeah, it's interior. And yeah. then it sometimes has to manifest. And when it manifests, sometimes people will manifest it in the most aggressive and violent ways against another, like, Mm. you're telling me that i don't live in the truth because my truth is this and you should accept <laughs> mm. <laughs> I you know? and of course of course is they they have power they have the power to exercise that mm -hmm. truth you know yeah talking about slave morality and uh the stuff uh, the the religious stuff so there is i like i'd like to quote a couple of lines from my book so 
uh there is the there is this chapter i guess uh, yes the chapter 3 so i have given out a story which is about the abyss so there is this abyss and there is the protector of the abyss which is the demon right and what every religious person wants to do is you know run away from the abyss you know just escape the abyss mm. so what they do is they they bribe the demon with their faith mm. to just trying escape from the abyss so there is this man who is in search of who is just exploring the abyss you know so the, there mm-hmm. was this quote that uh, um uh, when you are into the abyss there is no way out rather befriending it and exploring its depth so uh-huh. like the man goes in so there are milestones so first milestone he so he sees a religious person trying to run run away from the abyss bribing the demon with with faith you know so he has mm. bought the faith of demon by using his faith now he goes mm. deeper into the abyss he sees a spiritual person all those people you know modern age spiritual spiritualist spiritual person mm. and he does not have any faith to bribe the demon with so he tries to manipulate the demon with his words the spiritual person mm. and that's what spirituality is all about you know manipulating people with their words so he manipulates mm. the demon and runs away from the abyss and now mm. the person goes deeper into the abyss he meets meets an atheist a nihilist nihilist and they have nothing so the demon kills them and finally uh, the man is face to face with the demon and rest you you should read in the book so mm. talking about faith which is uh, the because i left my religion and i me talking about islam i left my religion and i was very much skeptical about my religion when i was a child um, used to ask questions to my father which for obvious reasons i didn't get answers to but you know now being a skeptic being curious and publicly uh, disclosing that i'm no more i don't no more follow my religion right so mm-hmm. i got backlash from my relatives from my friends mm. from the professors back there back at my university so and mm. the thing is and i think and the thing is i didn't i didn't uh, i didn't have had have that f- sense of fear inside of me you know to run mm. away run away because these people are you know uh, pointing fingers at me and i'm like mm. i'm on a journey to explore stuff way beyond uh. your faith because when you yeah. t- tend to indulge in religious debates and i have been in plenty of religious debates plenty plethora mm-hmm. of religious debates and mm-hmm. when you tend to people who are very very intellectually dumb and to pe- people who are rather good debaters and i have had debate and i was able to protect my stuff not debate is nothing to protect yourself you know just trying mm-hmm. to come up with arguments so the thing is mm-hmm. all these people rely to is the word faith what's mm-hmm. your take on that religious people right. using faith this is what is given to us this is what we have to believe yeah. in whether the yeah. sun rises from the west in spite of mm-hmm. rising from the east that is by god's mm-hmm. will we have to believe it so mm-hmm. what's your take on that yeah <clears throat> well you know first uh you were talking about the abyss you know nietzsche uses that image a lot of the abyss right yeah you, yeah and also somebody i thought when you were talking that i don't know if you maybe you've read him albert camus and yeah. he i've camus, heard of him yeah it talks about camus. the, the yeah. absurd the absurd for me i when i picture the absurd is is like an abyss and camus camus was was an uh, a nietzschean he he mm. read a lot of nietzsche so mm. i think i think it uh, could link a lot there mm. but you know fate um fate for me is a question is a very interesting philosophical question yep if we were to have the answer i think we would be god <laughs> simply that yeah yeah so i stopped the conversation with religious people there like are you god no i'm not or uh, oh, you're not mm. then talk they don't talk to me about faith only god would know mm. Mm. you know Mm. but <laughs> I, i'm not that's when of course I, i i know i cannot talk to some people mm. when there are other people like you said you know some people of religious uh uh, uh beliefs they are talkable to mm. when i feel that i i go into a longer conversation mm-hmm. and then i would start with okay fate what is fate mm. what is Mm-hmm. how do we know 
Mm. How do we know fate? Well, mm. like you said, well, the sun rises up. Well, the sun has not always existed. <laughs> mm. Maybe the universe as it is has not always existed. The sun and the earth are changing their speed all the time. Mm. The universe is changing speed all the time. The rotation of the earth just last week. I read uh, something that is changed already, but a small mm. amount, mm. but it's rotating faster, which changes, which changes the time of the year in a few seconds already. Yeah. So we have a, a few seconds faster now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> We're running a few seconds faster. Mm. Where is the stability to be seen in the universe? Mm. Nothing is stable. Mm. Nothing is stable. And with that, mm. I go with Nietzsche to Heraclitus, the pre-Socratic, mm. that uh, was uh, saying that one same man cannot go twice into the same river. Yeah. Because the second time he goes in, it changes. He's not the same man. Mm -hmm. And the river has passed. Has yeah, for sure. Flown different fish are there different particles are, are different there. maybe it rained mm -hmm. the same man a few days later he's older already a few days but you know how many days does it take for all your body to change your cells in your body yeah so this idea of a stable universe with stable truths that's an interesting philosophical idea only up to a point but when we start to look into nature, mm. as, as you gave the example of the sun, mm. even that is not static, it's changing all the time. Mm. So if everything is changing, it doesn't mean that we don't have repetitions, but even those repetitions might be changing. You know? so what would, it's a, it's a, yeah, so yeah. Fate, fate would be then maybe an accumulation. Okay. To go with uh, Bergson, Henri Bergson, mm. a philosopher of time. Mm -hmm. um, fate, maybe, just to give another story, not the truth here, uh, but maybe fate is an accumulation of things. Mm. And just that. Uh, maybe the past is here with us. Everything that's been happening is, is happening, like the sun is rising up and going down that's the way we see it because mm. that's that's when we look up to the sky it seems like it gets up rises and you know goes down that's how we want to but, see it but that's the that's the human yeah. experience if you look from the another planet yeah. you'll see something else <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. so everything is as a point of view we mm -hmm. cannot escape that we have a very limited mm. point of view. And that's where Nietzsche comes in to say, uh, well, knowledge, what is knowledge possible for the human? Mm. Only a human, all to human knowledge. And mm. even that is very complicated because we cannot know all the knowledge all the humans have. Mm. Uh, we only have a very partial knowledge in our condition as humans. Mm. We, if we can have some access to the knowledge of a bird, it's going to be partial too, mm. very partial, because we're not birds, mm. or a fish, or a tree, or a rock in this universe. Mm. So this will to knowledge of the human, uh, it's not very humble, is it? Like... People that talk about something that they claim to be talking about God, the existence of God, but they are thinking they are God. They're not so humble, these people. Mm. To me, some of them have killed God already. They just don't know about it mm. because they're talking for their own God. <laughs> mm. they're, they're, they're putting words in the mouth of their own God. So mm. they're not very humble. They're not very... You know, all these values that some of the larger religions have, the monotheistic religions especially, mm. they, they talk about humility so much, but do they practice it? Mm. 
not really, mm. not really. I see so many more humble people that call themselves atheist or scientist or nothing at all, mm. or just walking by somebody in the street that has no education, has no school, but is much more of a thinker, a philosopher, and even to some point spiritualist mm. or religious for me than somebody that says they know everything about the religion. Mm. That I think they, they are just fucking arrogant people <laughs> and violent mm. and aggressive people that I don't want to deal with, that uh, sometimes I just have to make them shut up or go away, you know? Mm. So, because life is struggle, mm. it's something that Nietzsche teaches us, mm. you know, uh, not teaches us, it just makes us see. There's no life without struggle. There's no life without a fight. Mm. But you won't be that stupid person going after fights. Why? You know, just you make your life happen. Mm. If people show up to you, like in your channel, or you're saying, or your podcast, or like they show up at my channel, calling me all kinds of names. Yeah. And somebody somebody calls me, oh, you're just a rat, you're just an atheist, or you're just oh, a yes. co communist. Yeah, and that's... They have all, the, yeah. all these labels. And yeah, you yeah. know what I say to them? And you're just a pirate's parrot. <laughs> you're just repeating mm. what other people said, mm. other people ways of life. You're mm. a parrot. Mm. You're over the pirate's shoulder. Mm repeating the pirate that's what you are. you know what i so tell small. these people you know what i tell these people i'd rather be a curious fool than being an intellectual puppet yeah totally yeah you know and you know what at the end it should make us rejoice having this feedback like who is saying this how does this person live well let me keep on with my life here in existence spec i'm yeah. doing pretty well you know <laughs> if i'm if i'm being critiqued by these people i can ignore or i, I can just give a rough answer mm. and go on with my life it just shows that i'm i'm okay i'm doing okay here it's not that i'm in the right no one's in in the total right mm. it just for me uh when these these very reactive people these herd mentality people, to use Nietzsche's word, these slave morality people, when they use all these, you know, resentment against me, I'm like, oh, ah, I'm, ju I'm just in the right path here. I'm living my life because mm -hmm. all uh, resentful people, they cannot bear to see people that are just living and going forward, affirming themselves, you mm -hmm. know? Being able to say that you're smart, that you that you you know mm. how to live better today than you knew in the past, or that you don't want to live like these fanatics in churches, mm. whatever they are. Uh, mm. Being able to say that and feel that as a relief and a, as a good path in your life, which doesn't need to transform in a, in a in a model for anyone. That's the point. Mm. That's the point. There's no model, mm. right? Like Zaratustra, he's like, hey, man, don't follow me. Hmm. Make your own path. You hmm. don't get it. Hmm. Just don't follow. Hmm. Just make your own. Hmm. Make your own path. That's the thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I get you. And you know, uh, these people, what I was talking about, these people come and tag me. All these religious people, all they know about is who an atheist is. You know, if he's speaking, speaking, critiquing God criticizing god then he's an atheist and um you know what i tell these people like you why have they killed god let's take a different perspective to this mm -hmm. these people cannot hear any criticism towards god they are like protecting god like it is some dead entity you know how people memorize uh, you know make memorials of a dead person you know how mm -hmm. they remember yeah. a dead person they cannot hear anything bad about a dead person it's like god is dead god is dead and you cannot hear some mm -hmm. anything bad about him you know it's mm -hmm. god yeah. is just in your memories because god never spoke god is just like in your mm -hmm. memories you are it's a memorial for you you are um you mm -hmm. are worshiping him as him or it as deities and all that yeah. stuff you know so you are just worshiping a corpse yeah you are a lunatic yeah. devotee 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you when you speak for somebody else, mm. <laughs> because because many religions have this idea of God as anthropomorphic, as mm. formed in the image of a man. Mm. When you speak for this other, you mm. killed him already. Yeah. This other is not speaking for himself. Mm. You've killed him. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nietzsche, Nietzsche is not an atheist in the sense that he mm. just doesn't know if God exists. So mm. what what could be God? He he's he's much more interested in saying, mm. when you say God, what are you saying? What are you doing? Mm. What's happening here? Mm. And in Christianity, this has a story. He's critiquing that, mm. the effects of that on people's ways of living. Mm valuing life or disvaluing actually right mm -hmm. uh, uh charging against themselves and life that's the issue that's that's why it became a problem mm. if if the so-called god of christianity was uh life affirming mm. he would affirm it <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah like you know what what does god tell us oh god tells us you know make the best of your of your body mm. take care of your body but treat it as a natural thing mm. and divine at the same time that mm. it is mm. if, it, if it was that mm. he's like oh good then sensu sensuality is not a, a total issue mm. it's not evil uh I, you know uh i'm not a sinner mm. by nature mm. oh that's interesting the world is not done mm. like good and evil are already pre-selected for me mm. it's much more open than that mm. that's interesting to live in mm. it's not a prison mm. but but western subjectivities live in a prison and so many other religious subjectivities mm. live in a prison of the moral right mm. the moral wrong you get punished you get you get uh uh silenced you get vi all sorts of violations against you mm. for trying out what life has as possibilities hmm. if god made all these possibilities hmm. you know hmm. if there is a god that made all these possibilities why would he like, there's no he for me he is already strange right yeah yeah, yeah. why would this thing called god hmm. it's not a, for me it's not a man a bearded man sitting somewhere hmm. and judging us you know hmm. that's a very weird thing you know yeah like for Nietzsche, all the energies of life, they go through everything, mm. through everything. If, if I'm to think of uh, naming God, you know, I would go with Spinoza, mm. you know, that God is in everything. Mm. God, <clears throat> God's manifestations of God are everything that exists, everything. Mm. There's, and then, of course, there are more interesting ways that we can access for ourselves mm. that we can find in our life mm. to make those manifest. There, mm. are, there are less interesting ways of this God manifesting for us, mm. but there's no universal charter or rules to follow mm. for that to work. You have to, you have to do your work. Mm. You have to do your own experimentation mm. to know what works in your life. Mm. That's the hard thing. People, people yeah, uh, 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 are scared of that, maybe, mm. you know, of having to put the work to find out for themselves what in their life is a good sper experimentation mm. because it's risky. Mm. It's risky. It might go wrong, you know. Mm. If you're not prudent enough, uh, taking a thought like Nietzsche's eternal recurrence, for example, uh, Nietzsche was was for a long time scared of that mm. and he makes Zarathustra go through that because for himself it was a heavy burden to take on like well what if everything that happened would were to happen again mm. and i would know that would i affirm it again mm. would i say yes to life if all my life were to happen the same exact way again mm. would i be affirmative of it or would I negate it and say, oh, no, thank you. I don't want it anymore. Mm. I want out. Mm. Or would I affirm? And then Zarathustra is, is the, 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 the character mm. that Nietzsche creates to go through that experience, mm. to mm. have that experience of having such a life, such a high affirmation of life mm. as to say, if I were to live everything the same way again, 
mm. hey, I'll take it on. I'll leave it again. Yeah. Because that yeah. thought, if you if you're taking that thought right now, mm. you have from now on mm. you think that everything you do has a certain weight, which is it's gonna happen again. Mm. Yeah. That's a heavy, heavy burden for some people that are in full negation, for example, that are just waiting to go to heaven or somewhere else or, or to be judged, you know, or, or are judging themselves already. Mm. If they feel heavy, if they feel life is too much, mm. then mm. they're like, oh, I have felt this before and I'm still feeling it mm. and I'm going to feel it for eternity. Oh, mm. what now? Yeah. I can't get out of this. Oh, mm. this is too heavy. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, well, mm. do you think there's nothing you can do? Mm. You really think there's nothing you can do? Mm. Think again. Try again. Yeah. So it's like, mm. do you think you don't create your reality as well? Yeah. You think reality is just given? Huh. Really? Huh. Well, if you think that way, continue thinking that way. See what happens. But <laughs> I don't think it's going to be interesting if you think life is a burden to mm. continue to think that way. Mm. So you have to, uh, in a way, it's just like uh, giving us a way to, to have to weigh ourselves, our mm. ways of thinking and being in the world, rethink, react, experiment mm. in a new way, you know. And of course, he's doing that, thinking highly over this stigma on life by Christianity, you know, this uh, negation of life. Yeah, this concept of eternal recurrence, you know, that a demon comes and tell you this. Um, so this is quite beautiful, you know, and this is the real yeah. self-help if we talk about, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although, we, although very different, right? Yeah, yeah the real one. Yeah, <laughs> the real self-help, yeah, what yeah. Nietzsche is trying to preach, yeah. you know, not what nihilism is trying to say or not what all these. Yeah, uh, it's, it's so different from self-help because normal self-help, dominant self-help self -help is yeah. like, here's the solution. Solution is an escape. And Nietzsche, yeah. Nietzsche is not giving the solution. solution. Yeah. He's, he's like, the solution is, mm. man, there's no solution. No solution, because solution is an there's escape. No, just find it. It's it's day-to-day -day work. Yeah. It's day-to-day, -day, continuous work. Yeah. Continuous, continuous. Yeah, so this is what people, this is a mistake which people tend to make. Uh, they try to find a solution for a problem. And a solution yeah. might just be an escape to a problem. How far you're going to yeah. run from your problem. It's just a temporary escape. Yeah. You know, it's a process. Yeah. It's an il illusion. Yeah. Yeah, it's an illusion. Yeah. And Nietzsche is like, is like, oh, you don't want to do the work. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to do the work. Yeah. The work, as, as philosophers have shown us uh, in the West uh, for a long time, even, you know, like from Plato to the Stoics, they're like, the work is daily, 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 daily attention to what mm. you're doing with your mind, with your body, and it doesn't stop. Mm. When you think you stopped, mm. you're wrong already. Mm. <laughs> because life is a continual process mm. of overcoming mm. that, yeah. of change. Like you have, uh, you have read too much about Nietzsche, right? And uh, the thing is, uh, more than us, for obvious reasons, like for a person who is too much into suffering, too much into pain, agonizing pain, you know, internal pain, mm. not some sort of physical pain. So how would you, like someone, let's say, is going through a divorce, you know, a 25 mm. year years marriage and his wife cheated on him, let's say. Let's take a hypothetical mm. situation. Mm. He is in agonizing pain. So how will mm. you explain him the, the thing which we were talking about, uh, solution is an escape. Like that person is looking for instant, mm. uh, a magic pill, you know. Someone yeah, who is going through yeah. suffering is looking for a magic fill. How will you yeah. articulate uh, that this is this is how you can cope up with your suffering and problem? So what's your take well, on that? I don't know. I don't know. There's no there's no magical answer, right? Mm. One one needs to experiment. But the highest experimentation is already to get away from that idea that there is someone to blame. Mm. There's someone to put a fault on, either oneself or the other, mm. or God or whatever. Yeah, bad uh, faith. Mm. Yeah, and that life changes. Okay, yeah. And life is unpredictable. Mm. 
And to fully, fully, fully immerse yourself in that is a certain form of liberation from the wish of any guarantee in life. Mm. Marriage is no guarantee. Mm. There's no guarantee in marriage. Mm. It's a lie when people say, well, if you're marrying here, God wanted it this way, <laughs> and you should be together all your life. It's a lie. Yeah. Some stupid man created that because they had to dominate women, mm. because they had to dominate other men through mm. the women. It's always like that. It's always like patriarchy. You know, mm. marriage is very patriarchal. Mm. I am uh, practically married to a woman for 11 years now. Mm. It's my second marriage. Mm. But I know I'm not her owner. We're not even married now. We're together for 11 years. My first marriage, I married, and then I divorced. And I was very sad because I, I thought I was going to be with her for the rest of my life. And I thought life had something wrong. I did not time. have that background, you know. Uh, I I wasn't I wasn't a Nietzschean in a in a way at the time. Okay. I wasn't. I I, I really wanted a full guarantee. Like I was Christian at the time <laughs> in a way. I was I, I was not a practitioner believer. Okay. I was I consider myself very atheist. Okay. Although today I rethink even atheism. Mm. I don't I don't label myself in any way anymore. Uh, but uh, when I when my first marriage ended, I was like very very sad and vindictive against life. I'm like, why, why this should not have happened? And then I changed again, and life showed me other things, and I rethought all of this. Okay, in the way I'm talking now, mm. that life does not uh, does not owe us anything. Life has no guarantees. Mm. Life just happens. Mm. And in this sense, it doesn't mean there's no fate. It doesn't mean it, it does mean we don't if there is such, we don't have access to it as small human perspectival beings of reality mm. that we are. Mm. But we think life owes us sometimes, you know. So I think to cope with life's unpredictability unpredictabilities we in a way uh there is a lot to be learned from philosophy like the stoics that were already already always preparing themselves for the unpredictable that could happen you know we should expect mm. that the unpredictable is is, is gonna happen yeah in it's gonna happen. so many yeah. aspects of our lives you know yeah but 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 then again, somebody that loses somebody they love very much in mm. one day, we can't expect the person not to suffer the next days and months maybe. Who knows? You know, mm. every person is an experience. Every reality <laughs> is different. Yeah. Uh, but I think that it, when somebody has so many cultural and philosophical thoughts ingrained in them. Mm. that wished for continuity as a guarantee of life. Like, oh, I'm married and I'm going to be married with this person for the rest of my life. Mm. That, that when that is ingrained in the person, that's a problem. Mm. That's a problem. It's not a problem if it never happens. If the, a person never divorces, mm. it's almost confirming the law. But mm. uh, when yeah. divorce comes then the person is not prepared for it mm. when the person thinks that life has one way to go or mm. marriage when you marry you go with that person you know mm. there are many 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 situations i'm just I get giving you. an example yeah, i get you mm. you know uh, the so nietzsche, nietzsche helps in that because yeah, he's all about you. Thinking life as a constant chaos, 100%. a constant flux mm. that's unpredictable, mm. that we have a, a place, a, a space to play in it, a mm. creative place to play in it, but we are never in control. Mm. We are never in control mm. of everything that happens with us and, 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 and as an effect of our actions, mm. too. Mm. We're never in, con in full control of ourselves. Mm. 
you know, or or of the other or of the world. Yeah, you know this saying of predicting the unpredictable. Like when my father passed away, I didn't have a very beautiful relationship with my father. Every every guy who is a teenager, you know, twenty twenty one, twenty two. So I'm twenty two. So you know, does not you know this? There is this constant rivalry of who's who, who is the man of the house, psych- psychological rivalry, mm. and mm. Um, me writing a book. Uh, me giving out my thoughts is not because I want to be a philosopher. I'm not a philosopher mm-hmm. wannabe. It's just you know something happened. I didn't take death mm-hmm. to be very serious, you know. Mm-hmm. And many people would say it is not very serious. You know, everyone has to go. But someone who is in front of you, walking, talking with you, eating with you, you know, uh, sh- sharing the same bed I used to sleep with my father, and then. him going all of a sudden and religion mm-hmm. is something which caused the friction religion right. caused the friction because no everyone is not unshackled you know everyone you cannot think like us like you you know so he was like mm-hmm. why why ain't my son uh, praying why ain't my son, son offering namaz you know why ain't my son doing this this mm-hmm. thing torments me now you know because mm-hmm. this is something which is absolute bs now as mm-hmm. we know of and creating rifts and you know friction between right. people so what i did yeah. was instead of crying instead of you know wasting my life away uh, that mm-hmm. i didn't spend the best amount of time with my father i mm-hmm. turned that thing around you know mm-hmm. channeled yeah. my emotions for on writing yeah. a book preaching philosophy talking to people like that's, you that's excellent that's, yeah. that's excellent because that is a creative way of dealing with life's unpredictabilities that's yeah. that's the best thing mm. and because you could very much turn other ways and mm. say you know become a dogmatic mm. dogmatic person mm. or go inward and very sad and just stay there yeah of course there's sadness but you're turning that sadness into action mm. you know that energy sadness is a form of energy when mm. something happens to us and makes us sad there's a lot of accumulated energy, energy. yeah and one way to go is to create something yeah. art a, a new way of life mm. a new way of th- to think to mm. feel a new way to feel mm. you yourself in the world mm. a new a new you you know mm. in a way mm. a- another you mm. another you that was maybe already there too yeah so there there are ways uh, but again we go back to the beginning of our conversation today mm. when we were talking about it's not only suffering that can bring that uh other 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 ways as well other ways other well. experiences in the world mm. should also be openness to creativity mm. you know it's not only suffering yeah, it's but not suffering, only suffering certainly accumulates energy mm. joy can also accumulate mm. energy and produce other things you know mm. so that's great that you did that mm. um that you knew how to channel because i think that's channeling energy mm. some people keep that bad energy with them and then can develop it into even this mental or physical disease you know yeah for and sure if you if you if you're channeling it mm. you're doing something with it and you can cure yourself and go ahead you know yeah and my message to all the people uh, uh, watching this stream would be that you know where once you start channeling you know this 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 suffering this this thing that that this pain which i'm going through is not imposed you know by myself on to mm-hmm. me it's something which yeah went according to the will of nature will of god will of the universe whatever you claim it to be so you know just many beautiful things so the book which i have been writing I cannot still believe how beautiful some couple of lines come out so beautifully and I still don't believe mm. what what have I written you know not having any premise of reading philosophy or books so That's this is great. the only yeah this is the only message I would like to give and coming back to Nietzsche I would like to ask you Nietzsche was himself uh, you know tormented with uh, physical ailments you know uh, all those diseases he had mm. so and he he went through suffering and you know what people say optimistic people so called optimistic people what they claim themselves to be they say that okay you are going through suffering but there is there would be a there is something good which is kept for you 
you know there mm-hmm. is something good to yeah. come there is good in ev- everything <laughs> compensation uh compensation <laughs> yeah so like when you look yeah. at the life of nietzsche you know i recently i was going through the life of nietzsche uh, like a couple of months ago and i i had literal tears in my eye because i was able to relate his story with mine you know and literal mm. tears why yeah. because he didn't see any good he mm. didn't what we claim what we as humans claim yeah. to be good he yeah. saw suffering Uh, yeah. uh rejections uh, marriage reje- rejection marriage yeah. proposal rejections his father passing away his sister his yeah. mother not accepting him you know society yeah. not accepting him his books not being sold him yeah. publishing his books he's going through lots pain. of rejection yeah, yeah lots yeah. of rejection nobody attending yeah. his lectures you know two or three yeah. or four people attending in lectures yeah. so uh, what do you think about nietzsche mm. i mean i mean he mm-hmm. has given masterpieces you know yeah. so what yeah. do you think book writing was his way of you know coming out of it pouring himself out yeah for sure thinking examining himself hmm. uh having an intense life too hmm. you know like doing what he felt was better for his body for his mind hmm. uh having fun to having friends to talk about issues that matter to him um and transforming the 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 rejection the suffering into the channeling of of a creativity mm. not mm. wishing for life to pay him back mm. yes taking over life in his own hands mm. not wishing any payback payback mm. like recognition mm. like fame mm. like money mm. like f- friends and mm. lots lots of friends mm. he had a few friends and that was it for him and and he 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 really came into an experience of being somebody mm. that really did not expect anything from life just said you know mm. let's go Mm. I don't expect anything. Mm. There's there's nothing you have to give me. Yeah. His conversation with life mm. like Zarathustra talks to life in in the Zarathustra. <laughs> uh, his conversation with life was like, "Oh, you showed up. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. What do you want? Uh. Oh, you want that? Okay. Nice. Okay. See you later." Mm. You don't it doesn't matter. There's nothing I have to give to you. Mm. nothing you have to give to me mm. Mm. that's let's just live yeah let's go there's no manual for life yeah there's no mm. high expectation to mm. be reached mm. you just live and you make it make sense for you mm. and that's all mm. and that's all yeah. that's all you can do yeah. but he made it in such a way mm. in such a powerful way that mm. we're talking about him <laughs> mm-hmm. yes such a powerful experience of life such an intense relation mm. to oneself mm. and to the world mm. that it, it's it's almost like few people mm. came to be able to have you know mm. i think i i i'm pretty sure Mm. uh because w- especially when your point like you're pointing to such a hard life mm. you know such a it would it, it would be so easy for some people to to just kill themselves or succumb mm. or to be vengeful mm. or to be resentful and mm. of course he had resentment to be able to talk about resentment mm. he felt it too but he felt it and then he wanted to overcome it Mm. he felt guilt and wanted to overcome it he felt it the idealism and wanted to overcome it and mm. that's why he's able to put it in words and, and in history mm. in such a beautiful way mm. to recognize it as 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 a historical cultural construction mm. and in that sense to offer us a way to free ourselves mm. at least partially mm. from these constructions these historical mm. cultural legacies so he helped us yeah you know yeah in helping himself he ended up ended up 
I can say helping me a lot, mm. a lot, because for, for some time, I was a metaphysical philosopher, a metaphysical thinker, okay. very resentful with life, very much wanted, wanted to be compensated for living. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I get you. Yeah. So you have embraced his philosophy. Like we can go on and on for hours. Yeah, talking. I, I embraced in a way that is yeah. very open, you know, yeah. which is the way he wanted. You yeah. understood the philosophy. Nietzsche it, is not, yeah, you know, Nietzsche, like many people take Nietzsche to be, read Nietzsche or take Nietzsche to be a fad, you know, a fashion. Like he's a cool philosopher. You know, he's mm -hmm. pessimistic, yeah, so yeah. he is pessimistic, so he he's very cool, you know, not trying to grasp the yeah. essence of Nietzsche, you know, yeah, so you and, grasp. And even this, even this category of pessimistic, pessimistic, mm -hmm. but the pessimism for Nietzsche only comes after an optimism or with an optimism yeah. towards, towards affirming life. So you cannot, you cannot be a critical thinker in a way Nietzsche is, mm. without having a high optimism for life. Mm. So there's no high pessimism without a high optimism. Mm. I was about to quote but, this. Yeah, I was about to mm -hmm. quote this, that people claim themselves to be very optimistic, but they are like, they mm -hmm. have taken life and optimism for granted. They have no fire yeah, left totally. in themselves. Yeah. No fire left in themselves. Yeah. So why yeah, Nietzsche? Ni yeah. Nietzsche's optimism is not about saying yes. Yes. Like a stupid, stupid person saying yes to everything. Yes. Yes. That's what it is. Like his pessimism is what created the masterpieces he has given, you know, because mm -hmm. when you are pessimistic, it is very good because there is this fire, constant fire to achieve something. There might be something going through his head to achieve something. We cannot tag mm -hmm. him that he wanted to achieve something, but there might be something. Him writing down mm -hmm. his books, you know, because he was in that constant fire. You know, he didn't take life mm -hmm. for granted. He didn't take yeah. life for granted what optimistic people yeah. do. And we can go on and on, you know, what Rodrigo, yeah. we can go we, on and on. With Nietzsche, we can go, we can go on and on, on and, and on. on. Because, yeah. because that's uh, the, the, the things he talked about were exactly about opening ourselves to life and life is constantly flowing flowing so yeah. that's why we can talk without stopping without forever. stopping <laughs> yeah yeah so but, but we should stop we should stop. yeah we should stop <laughs> because we have a couple of questions right here and then we'll proceed towards uh -huh. a okay. small rapid fire round you know five okay, questions let's just go go through the questions uh, go through, the, there are a couple of questions so uh, uh -huh. someone is asking what why shall humans exist in philosophical sense, mm. not religious one. Why shall humans exist? Why shall humans exist? Mm. That's a good, good question. Mm. I would say, keep asking it. Mm. That's one of philosophical questions mm. are to be lived and rethought mm. again and again and again. Mm. This is a very good one. Mm. You this know? is a very good one that many philosophers asked, but those that uh, put an end point to it, mm. Nietzsche is not one, mm. uh, they were wrong. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because if we're, like we were saying right now, if we're still here, mm. the why has not come to an end. Mm. The why of existence mm. cannot be settled. Mm. unless we're finished and even when we're finished who's gonna be there later to tell the why you yeah. know and philosophical questions they much more show the limits of our knowledge that we can tackle with and that are interesting to tackle with that make us think because knowledge real philosophical knowledge is at the limits of our so-called scientific or common sense knowledge you mm. know philosophical mm. knowledge is about tackling the limits of mm. what is known so if, if we're talking if we're talking about philosophy philosophically about humans if we answer that question with a final answer we're not doing philosophy anymore mm. we're not yeah. we're outside of philosophy already mm. philosophy is about continually reflecting about uh, the major, major questions that keep our thinking 
going without stop mm. while life is not stopping while we're living mm. we're thinking and what and maybe we are thinking maybe we are thinking when we are tackling with the limits mm. the the borders of mm. what we think we know mm. maybe we're thinking there and then maybe we're asking the good questions for me this is a good question but hey, that's it if it's philosophical mm. it should not be answered once and for all mm. why do we exist mm. why do we exist what are the we here mm. what does the we presuppose mm. does the we presuppose a sameness mm. that when we say human we're all the same mm. don't we have humans that are not humans anymore living in mm. the middle of us mm. because humans changed mm. throughout history you had human neanderthals uh, mm. sapiens 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 mm. erectus mm -hmm. these are locatable as different kinds of so-called humans haven't we changed in the last 100 200 years in our capabilities in our ways of being mm. maybe i don't know mm. the uh and but the question is about the why mm. about the why mm. and to answer why we exist we would have to answer why does the world exist mm. Mm. and to answer why the world exists I don't think humans were adapted, were created mm. to know this. Mm. And then I'm Nietzschean. Then I'm like, humans don't have an organ for knowledge mm. in the sense that of, of full knowledge. Mm. Mm. So humans cannot answer this question yeah. of why humans exist. Mm. Because humans, to answer that question of why humans exist, mm. would need to answer as well, why does everything else exist? Yeah. But we're only human. Yeah. We're only a part. Mm. We're only a perspective of the whole. We cannot answer for the whole. Yeah. So that, philosophically, yeah. we cannot answer that question. Yeah, that is why subjects like epistemology, the knowledge of knowledge, you know, uh subjects yeah. like full-fledged subject epistemology metaphysics what lies beyond uh, beyond physical mm -hmm. uh, and the knowledge of epistemology was you know in a way developed to combat existential crisis of why are we mm -hmm. existing why should we exist uh mm -hmm. you know so the whole people are studying this in phds and doing research researches on this so one cannot put this in a yeah, box. And again, epistemology will talk about very interior yeah, process yeah. of the human mm -hmm. and stop there. Stop there, yeah. It's not talking about the world. World in general, yeah. Yeah. It's not talking about existence. Yeah. So, in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, uh, we shall move to uh, the rapid fire round. Six questions. You have to answer them oh. in either <laughs> okay. a word or a line, okay? So Ooh, very hard. <laughs> no, not very hard. It's it, it 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 you can do this. You can do this. So okay, okay. Num question number one. One line by Nietzsche which hits you. Uh, a quote by Nietzsche or a line which has changed your life forever. Hmm. One line. Yeah. One, one. It's so, it's so hard. Although Nietzsche wrote so many one lines, so many one lines. It's so, so hard to come to just one. Mm. Uh, it's a heavy, heavy thing to do. But <laughs> make it. I'll just think of because we, we, we talked about the abyss. I, I stayed with that phrase. Uh, that when you look too long into the abyss, mm. the abyss looks back at you. Mm. <laughs> in a in a nutshell, can you explain that by nature? In a nutshell, briefly. It's very hard in a nutshell. It, it because it's so yeah, I powerful. Know. An image. I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, but when when you start to delve into in 
to big things or the unknown, things start showing up to you and you have to deal with them in ways you might not be prepared to. Mm, okay. So it's scary. It's hard. Mm. Because the unknown is unknown. It can do many things to you that mm. you won't know. Mm. The abyss is this. Mm. It's a limit of the unknown, you know, and it's always it's always there. Mm. Okay. And and so you like like the philosophical question that was just raised. Right. It's the unknown, mm. right? You're you're tap tacking into the unknown. Mm. But be care, do it, be careful when you do it. Yeah. Because it's going to come back at you. you and you have to have strength and prudence to be able to deal with it. Deal with it, yeah. Because it's not gonna be easy for sure to mm. deal with the unknown. Mm. Yeah. Okay. At the same time, it could be very powerful and life changing. Mm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Question number two. Yeah. Your favorite book written by Nietzsche? The gay science. The gay science. The gay science. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now this is again. Uh, you're gonna bash me on this one, but <laughs> still, I'm gonna ask this question. Um, uh, Nietzsche's philosophy in a line or one word, one word which you would like to use or one line to to you know uh, tell Nietzsche's philosophy. What would it be? Uh. Interestingly enough, hmm. if I were to say one word that always comes to my mind hmm. when I think of Nietzsche's philosophy hmm. is blood. Hmm. Okay. And that's interesting because it, that was such a high theme for Hitler, right? Hmm. But Hitler's blood hmm. was blood with a vengeance blood mm. that that Nietzsche critiqued yes Nietzsche was talking from another blood which was like a living body living body wanting for this blood mm. to flow with excitement mm. or a philosophy with blood as Nietzsche said would mm. be a living philosophy a way of life mm. Mm. that's not resentful against life that mm. is affirmative of itself flowing, that it is of a great health mm. of the body, of the mind, of the spirit, just flowing, flowing like a river, mm. flowing, changing continuously. Mm. So yeah. blood comes to me, to my mind a lot. Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, a philosophy with blood in the veins flowing yeah very interesting. intensity intensity uh -huh. living living intensity and a big contrast between hitler and nietzsche yeah it's yeah. also very provocative provocative yeah. Yeah, to think yeah. of that yeah life lesson by nietzsche that everyone should stick to one life lesson that is above all hmm I think uh, le lessons that everyone should stick to should always be negative lessons, should, should always be deconstructive lessons, mm. should just be like, think again. Okay. Just that. Mm. Because mm. otherwise it would be going against everything Nietzsche says. Mm. Just think again. Think everything again and again and again. Mm. Just rethink. Rethink and reconstruct. Reconstruct. Yeah, mm. maybe you rethink and think the same again. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But you think again. Mm. Uh, other than that, there's nothing very universal about Nietzsche. It's, 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 all, it's all the contrary to that, right? Mm. It's a critique of any universal. Mm. Yeah, okay. Uh, your piece of wisdom for the younger generation. One piece of wisdom from your side. Mm-hmm coming from you well for the for the younger generations uh all we all we can say is like know your history man <laughs> yeah. and nietzsche can help mm. and others mm. well, even if you live in the east uh anywhere in the world this world was globalized by a certain western dominance of ways of style of now the internet mm. 
you know, with language, think, thoughts, Nietzsche, everything comes mm. um, in a sort of dominance of, of, of individualization, of corporate mm. capitalism. So just know where all these things are coming from. They have a history, which means that they can be uh, reproduced or they can be challenged. Mm. And that's why Nietzsche is important. We okay. can re reproduce and challenge mm. legacies and histories and cultures, and mm. that's it. Mm. Uh, other than that, uh, there's no schema that I can tell the younger generations to move forward. They'll have to find out for themselves, mm. like I'm doing for myself yeah. you know, and, and, and my communities. Yeah, for sure, for, for sure. The last question, the most important one of this whole of, of, of all these questions there was so much to talk about so will you come back for another podcast in the near future mm. sure why not uh, let's give it some time for people to digest yeah. this one not uh, not very soon we'll, not very soon we'll come back yeah, yeah i'll not trouble you very soon but for sure no problem but for sure and i want to read your book when you have it ready please yeah. let me know yeah thank you so much yeah for sure um uh, yeah. so we had a beautiful and interesting flow of conversation one of the better podcasts i've ever had uh thank you rodrigo thank you uh, thank you so much uh, for joining in you know spreading your wisdom uh, talking more about nietzsche enlightening people of who nietzsche really was <clears throat> how his philosophy really can work in your life work if you are looking for a miracle Nietzsche's philosophy can really work as a miracle in your life. You just need to have a good sense of under understanding him, you know, not looking him down, not like looking too much up to him, but, you know, just trying to understand who he was and what his philosophies was. And uh, our man, Rodrigo, uh, knowing his stuff, uh, really articulated very well. Thank you, sir, so much, uh, Thank you so much for, for your time. Yeah. And yeah, I'll just end the stream. Okay, uh, and then we'll okay, bye -bye. have a small conversation. Thank you, people. Please go and subscribe Rodriguez Rodrigo's channel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, yeah, I've ended the stream.